All right, we're live. Hey, everybody, we were a little bit late getting started. So just tell me if we've got any uh, technical difficulties, any bad audio out there. This is the first time that I'm streaming here from my new studio. It's not a new uh, facility by any means. This is actually my brother's bike shop. And if any of you have been keeping up with the bike industry, there's not a lot of bikes out there. So we've got space to rent. It worked out good. My brother's like, hey, man, I've got some space upstairs. You can use it for a studio. And so, you know, perhaps all things work for the better in the end. Uh, I'm here with my buddy, Brian. Brian's joining me in the studio. He lives here in Flagstaff, Arizona as well. And uh, he's just hanging out. We're, we're just good friends uh, since a long time ago. And you, he's got... He's got uh, two kids. I've got three. They've grown up, you know, kind of similar ages. And here we are getting old together. And I said, hey, come over and help me not miss anybody's important comments. So we're going to go over here to the chat real quick. And we'll just start out. I don't have an agenda. This is really just to see if things are going to work from my new studio, because I had such a hard time making it happen from my house. Those of you that were very kind to come along for the roller coaster ride and watch my live streams from my own house months ago, it was one technical difficulty after another, man. And then, you know, some of the time I've got my five-year-old knocking on the door, daddy, I have to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, oh man, can't get a break here. So I think this is gonna work out good, having, having my own space here. Bridget Shelby, thanks for being here, and uh, uh, I've been great, and so uh, I hope you're talking to me. Maybe you're talking to somebody else on the on the uh, comments, which is great, too, but, uh, but I personally have been fantastic. I want to let you all know that this downtime has been good for me to, to think about where I need to go with my business, and business has been good. You would think that the downswing of the economy lately – that would be hard, but uh, I'm thanking God every day that I still have just enough. You know, I'm not I'm not rolling in huge amounts of success right now. I don't have a, a lot more money than I ever did, but but I'm doing well. I'm happy. My bills are paid, and it's just like it's always been. I feel like I'm in this bubble of protection. So, me and my family are doing so good. Thank you. Can we get a virtual tour? Says Sharon. Okay. Uh, that is a good idea. I should do that. And so how am I going to give you a virtual tour? Let's see. Let's see if Brian can run over there and, and give the camera a quick spin. And you can see, you know, there's messier parts of this studio and, and there's nicer parts that I tried to put together. Behind me are my paintings. I finally have a spot to hang my work. So if you're coming through Flagstaff, Arizona ever, you can stop by the studio and I'll show you my paintings that I've got on the wall and, and you can hang out here with me. I love having company. So go ahead and just give that camera like a, you know, like a 180 from wall to wall, Brian. And, and you can see here is where I'm going to do my how-to videos. So I need a big backdrop. This is where I'll set up my, my murals when I wanna show how to paint a mural uh, or just a large painting. This is where I'm going to do it. And this light, I'm so excited. I've never been more excited about a ceiling. Get a shot of these fluorescent lights because, you know, a struggle that I've had for a long time is how to get good lighting. Well, let me tell you, a light source that goes for a far distance is the best when it's when it's overhead and travels for a long distance like this. So, you know, this is this is boring. Uh, fluorescent light ceiling, uh, except for the fact that it is exactly what I needed. And so I just hung this curtain and, and you'll know if you ever try to do a good video of your painting, you get lots of glare and reflection. So this is a place where, where I can set up a picture, put a camera in a place where I don't get the reflection. You can see all of the color and detail and it's very well lit at the same time. So those are important things and getting a space. And then over here to the other side, you can spin all the way around here to the bicycles window. We've got bicycle, a bicycle sign in the in the window right there to the outside. And I've got window, 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 window. I got four windows across this place. I'm very excited about the natural light. 
I got my Leviathan hanging on the wall. None of these paintings are finished, by the way. They're all just works in progress, but this forces me to look at them and perhaps take a few minutes here and there to work on them. And if you can, Brian, swing it all the way around to those two that are hanging, hanging to uh, the left further there. You can go here. Let's move my box lights. Here, let me get these out there. And you can see right here we've got my we've got my paintings on the wall. I've got got two more familiar pieces that maybe you've seen. This one actually I did as a paint along. This this was the big detailed version, and then I simplified it and made it small so that people could paint a picture similar to this in an hour at a coffee shop paint along event. So we did several of those here in Flagstaff. It was a lot of fun. And then COVID came, of course. That's the that's the story. That's everybody's story. Yeah. Then COVID. But that's that's how that picture came about. And then this one, of course, is uh, my good friend Cody purchased this picture and supported uh, my brother and I doing, doing a video project. And then he said, Joe, just keep it. He just wanted to support. So now I have the picture still and the money from Cody, my good friend that bought that picture. So I don't know what to do with the painting that's already bought. I can't sell it. I've just got to hang it. I've just got to keep it here and maybe keep working on it. I was thinking of maybe adding a pelican or something flying along. Have you ever seen how they do that? The, you know, you see the pelican swooping along the wave right here. And I think what they're doing, maybe if I watch nature shows more, I would, I would know but what I think is it's easier to see because of my studies on water, it's much easier to look through the wave when it's tipped right at you. So you get on this, on this wave that blocks the sunlight, you see right in there like a window. I think they're looking for fish in there when they fly along that wave. They might just be having fun too, it's just my guess. Okay, I'll run back over here to my, to my seat. And we don't have a lot on the agenda. So there's my <laughs> there's my studio. Uh, we didn't zoom out and give you the the big here. But we should try to see see the uh, whole room here. Let me zoom it out. You can see what this thing looks like. Here, Brian's just being nice. He doesn't want to break my camera. I didn't tell him that he was gonna he was gonna have to do this. So I'm just gonna spin this around. This is the whole thing. Here we are. When you zoom out and look at it, that's the studio. And I'm actually going to be giving art lessons out of here locally and I'm very excited about doing in-person lessons and so if you ever want to set something up just get a hold of me we can do that let me put this back where it was we're going to go right about here and get this get this where it was focused focused in right there okay that's the tour thank you for being patient while I while I show off my, my new spot that I'm very excited about. And so I'm just taking a, taking a quick look at the comments here. Uh, how much are your paintings, bro, says MC. Uh, thank you for asking that question. I sold that one to my friend, that, that curling turquoise wave. I sold that one for a couple thousand. And uh, I, I sold one at a workshop a couple years back for 500. And so... You know, it just depends how much I want to keep my painting, really. So I'll go sometimes just hundreds, sometimes thousands, if I'm not really trying to get rid of it. I don't have, like, famous person pricing. You know, I, there are people here in Flagstaff that don't have YouTube subscribers, but, man, can they sell their paintings. They sell them for 50000 100000 200000 I mean, crazy high numbers. So there's everything out there. I, I don't have that kind of reputation to sell my paintings you you might think that that uh i would but it's just different it's just a different kind of reputation yep pelicans are looking for fish you are absolutely right says paula all right thank you paula sounds like you know more than i do okay so here's what we can do is is uh i can draw i'm thinking it'd be fun to do some drawing so check this out i've got my studio set up so that I can just hit camera two right here, and then it goes over my head. You're looking down at my paper. So anything I want to demonstrate, I'm just gradually trying to look at the monitor and, and keep this straight. So see, uh, now I can demonstrate anything if there's any questions about how to draw something here. 
then I can do that real quick. So here, let's do a quick drawing. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can throw something together for my first drawing ever on, on my first 2021 Mural Joe Live from my new studio. Try to guess who this is. This is something that I learned to draw way back when, when I liked to watch cartoons a long time ago, but I'm not as good as the guys at Disney. I can't just whip it out all quick, you know. If I took time, I might be able to do a, a more thorough job with cleaner lines, but that was never my gift, doing clean lines. Let me encourage any of you out there that have a hard time making nice lines. Knowing is so much more important than being able to draw exactly where you want something to go the first time. I make crooked lines everywhere, but I just lightly sketch and sketch and sketch, you know, until I, until I gradually get things where I want them to be. And uh, understanding a three-dimensional shape is, is much more valuable than the motor skills that we want to have to be able to instantly put it on there. So the motor skills are, are are valuable, you know, they help you have speed and get your thoughts out quicker, more effectively. But, you know, I, I have pursued a, a career that is bringing imagination to life. I, I talk with my customers and they tell me what's on their mind. And my job is, is to bring that into, to make the vision become real, you know, it's to bring it to life. And so I'm not trying to express myself and then sell that expression in a gallery. I'm trying to use my knowledge of the three-dimensional world to create what someone's imagining in a way that's meaningful to them. And so I've pursued this ability of three-dimensional understanding all of my life, the first half of my life for love. And then of course now during my career for, for um, a job, <laughs> it was, it was Initially, I would like to say it was for a greater meaning, but it was initially just thinking, man, there's got to be something better I can do than just painting these houses. I was just repainting houses. And so I came home and talked with my wife. I said, hey, maybe I could just try using my God-given talent and see if I could become better. And I just was determined to research and be as good as I could be at doing my artwork. And so I said, there are people doing this new thing. Like they paint pictures on people's walls, their murals. <laughs> So we're all very familiar with it now. That's how it all started and it worked out. I had lots of helpful people surrounding me. Neoka says, where are you located? We are in Flagstaff, Arizona. And uh, that is the Northern part of Arizona, small town, maybe 50, 60,000. I'd say 60, 70 now, thousand people, not a huge population. I'm a small town guy. I love running into people I know at the store. I think if I lived in a big city, I'd definitely try to live in maybe a suburb. So, Brian, if I'm missing anything, just interrupt me right there. If you see anything that I should take note of, you just tell me. I just want to get any, any comments. We haven't done this in a long time, and so I'm eager to see a lot of you that were here months ago, see what's been going on, see what thoughts you've got. You're welcome for the tour, Sharon. That was a good idea. I would love to come uh, for lessons when the pandemic is over. All right. Well, I'll look forward to seeing you. Okay. I'm just taking a, taking a look here, reading, reading. Higher perspective art. I like that username. Could you show me how to draw clouds in perspective? Thank you. Thank you for asking that. That is a great subject. Yeah, I can show you how to draw uh, clouds in perspective. Like a massive skyscape with various clouds. All right, fantastic. Okay, I'm going to flip to the overhead camera and do exactly that. And Brian's going to take over scanning through comments if anybody's got a question as I go. And if your uh, comment got missed, then feel free to just ask again. And so we're going to flip over to the overhead camera, get rid of Mickey right there. We don't need that here. I'll just flip the paper over. And we're going to start making clouds in perspective. So Everything has perspective, every, every angle, no matter uh, where you're looking at it from. So, so what I want to think about, if I'm just making your, your very typical uh, puffy cloud, is that we want to create this. Uh, I'm trying to make 
large bumps constructed out of small bumps, just for starters. You know, I want like a big cloud, okay? And you can see they're very tiny, tiny little puffs on this cloud. And we'll go in like this. Maybe we'll put another one in front of it. So perspective, I'm gonna uh, start with the outer edge. And just like a landscape, let's say this was a hill or it was trees, I would do a similar, similar uh, strategy here. Put one in front of there, and then maybe we can put more in front of here. Now, as they go around the edge of the cloud, I'll probably see more of these. And I'm keeping my pencil very light. I don't want to make it dark. And I'm keeping all of these little puffy shapes very close together. And so as I get near the middle, these same little swoops that are oriented, you know, so think of it as maybe like a little frown shape, but I'm doing it more sideways. So out here, you know, it's oriented coming off of the lower middle. Just so you know my method of drawing this, that doesn't have so much to do with the perspective, but just so you understand what the shapes are I'm drawing, just a bunch of little arches that arch around the lower center. So this is what a cloud does, it puffs out and up. So then here in the middle, in order to get a three-dimensional perspective on just one cloud. Now I'll talk about how to get perspective on a, on a cloudscape, just like you asked. Uh, but I wanna start with perspective on just one cloud. So here I have a cloud, I've spaced out the little parts that are toward the middle here in order to create the feel of looking more through the texture and then seeing the texture uh, stacked on top of itself as we get near the edge, because you're seeing a lot more of these behind each other as we go around these edges. And if you really want to get detailed, you know, we can start shading a little bit, you know, on these edges, these, these little shapes. I want to keep them light and it's hard for me to control my hand well enough to stay really light and really blend these. But I'm going to try to make gradients that go down. So I just make a few lines that get lighter as they head down toward the middle of the cloud. And then these little lines on the very edge, maybe I won't, won't even touch those because the detail level is finer than what I feel like messing with. But you can see that I'm trying to make these, these slight gradients. Now this is just to achieve the same effect that I'm always, always trying to do when I make this particular kind of cloud and other kinds of clouds too, where you have a shape, you see a little bit of a shadow as the edges turn this direction as opposed to the face of any shape. So you get that tiny bit of shadow, uh, perhaps because the cloud is reflecting blue sky instead of allowing bright, bright light to pass uh, through it like these shapes that would be in the middle. Okay, so now let's say we want to put some clouds in perspective up above this. So let's make it. Flash room for more light. Oh, more light. It's hard to see this. Oh yeah, hard to see. Okay, let's get some more light in here. That's a good idea. Here, let me turn up. Let's see if we can turn up exposure. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. We're going to see if we can fix exposure. This is why it's important to do a first. Here, tell me if that's better. There, we got light, but I don't want to go so bright that we overexpose here. Let's go a little bit less. There we go. Okay, so we're starting light and we've got to get darker. So right now it's going to be a little bit harder to see. Oh, here, let's close that window, my bad. There we go. So now it's lighter. Now I know that's hard to see, but as I get darker, this should get easier. So let's see. Now, let's say that we have clouds. Now these are going to be the bottoms of clouds, a little bit different scenario. So let's put the bottom of some clouds in here, up in here, and they're going to be, you know, they're going to be at a higher layer above this one. So this one doesn't really have to be in here, but I just put it in there in front of these that are overhead. And so now let's start making some shadows. Let's say that we've got a shadow between two clouds. I'm gonna go like this. You know, you can just make a gradient and a gradient for anybody that, that is wondering what I mean when I say make a gradient, uh, just moving from one darkness to another darkness or one color to another color gradually. Uh, that's that's what I consider a gradient. And so now uh, this convenient thing starts to happen with the pencil. I always try to put my pencil 
in the same position because I'm looking for the flat spot. So I lost it actually. And now I'm getting these razor sharp little shapes. So the pencil develops a flat spot as you continue to draw. And that's a strategy that I use a lot of the time is using that same flat spot because you can run the lines together to create smooth shadows a lot more easily. So in my drawing, this is going to be the blue sky or the shadows coming out from under these clouds. So let's say this is like a this is like a sunset perhaps where the bottom of the clouds are brighter. Or let's just say they're thin clouds. It could be either one. The cloud is lighter than the space in between the clouds. And I'm just creating this effect right here with gradients. So now when I get up here, I'm going to make these shapes a little bit more vertical. So here we'll go, we'll go down a little bit further like this. And what that's going to do is change the perspective from looking along the surface to looking through the surface. So how about up here, we just make a big patch like this. So a small picture it kind of has to be a, a little bit fish-eyed, you know, like looking through a GoPro camera. So this picture is going to gradually get darker and darker as I do this. So anywhere I want this cloud to really pop out here. Let's go in here and make a few more spaces between clouds. And I'm just doing this because it's easier, you know, just, just uh, kind of mindlessly going through and putting dark spots where I'm going to say there is darker blue sky. The blue sky is quite a bit darker than the white of a cloud. So then as I gradually make this picture dark, darker, it'll show up better and better. I'm going to start putting shadows everywhere that I don't have this cloud in the middle. So see, I'm just taking lines and drawing them outward, keeping my pencil in the same direction so that I have the flat spot. So it's real hard at first to get smooth shadows. And this, you know, this uh, technique, I use this all the time when I'm doing renderings for customers. I want, I want to show them a, a landscape idea, a layout of a large mural, but it's going to cost me too much to completely paint the picture without even knowing if I'm going to be hired for the job. You know, people need to see a picture first. And so this technique of drawing a landscape with a pencil is a very handy skill for me to, to uh, constantly try to work on. So now I'm going to go here and start creating my shapes coming out of the clouds again. So it's just a triangle shape that swoops out wider and wider as it goes down, gets lighter and lighter. And this is again creating shadows in between clouds. So the shapes get more and more scrunched as they go back toward the horizon. And in this case, the horizon is below not above. You know, we constantly think of a, the horizon as being the line above the landscape, but you can think of the horizon as being just the, the line in between maybe a top and a bottom, bottom layer. Okay, so any really a horizon, just think of any flat surface, any flat plane. So, you know, a layer of clouds, it has its own horizon. Now, uh, what I'll do to enhance this perspective now is I'll try to really, really identify the clouds that are taking shape. So, okay, I've really got the bottom of a cloud here and I'm gonna work with the shadows I've already got. And I'm really going to tighten up these details. Your eyes can see and make use of details that are a whole lot smaller than what your hands can draw. Well, at least my hands. Maybe you're, you're different. If I really sharpen my pencil, I could challenge myself on that, but I find that the details I'm looking at are typically a lot more fine than what my hands are able to draw. So I'm going to, without hesitation, get very tiny with these, with these lines. And even my tiniest lines, I'm trying to make a gradient that starts high and gets softer as it goes lower so that I have a sharp edge. So the sharp edge would be any of these clouds. So this becomes a cloud here, like this, bottom edge of a, of a white cloud. This becomes the shadow in between. And so the gradient causes 
the three-dimensional shape to gradually emerge out of that out of that shadow. So now we could go the opposite. So now let's let's take one of these clouds. This will be kind of fun. Let's turn this cloud here. Let's darken this, sharpen up the edge a little bit. Let's clean it up so it really looks like a cloud. I'm going to clean up this edge right here. Okay, and then I'm going to add some details into this one. We'll try to make this look less like pencil lines and more like the edges of a cloud. So let's go right in here and start putting some shadows on this guy. On this guy. I just called the cloud this guy, which sounds like this sky. That was a, a, a funny error in an old Jimi Hendrix song. Excuse me, well, I kissed this sky. People thought it was this guy instead of the sky. Maybe a lot of you already know that. I thought that was a funny little piece of trivia that I heard on like a radio, radio story or something. Okay, so what I'm doing now is the opposite. I'm making shadows that are low. And so this cloud, I'll have a sagging part of this cloud. I'll make it get lighter as it goes up. Where uh, in contrast, that's, that's because this is a larger cloud. Uh, on the rest of the picture, I was going lighter as I went down with my shadows that were the blue sky. So managing these gradients is really valuable because the direction of these gradients are defining what the shape is. So here I'm making it darker, going lighter as it goes up, and then just letting it overlap with the rest so that this cloud has the feeling of having a shadowy overhang. You know, so we've got a shape that goes up this way, like that. Put another shape in here. I'll find a shadow I already made, make it darker. So this cloud is starting to look a little bit more stormy now if I create these shapes. And I could have uh, made this entire scene look a little more like the sun is directly overhead and shining uh, by doing it opposite. So you can make the gradients go either way, depending on whether you're making the clouds shadowed on the underside or lit on the underside. So these I'm making with light on the underside rather than a shadow on the underside. So I can do the same thing in here. We can make some gradients going up, make gradients going up this way. So same thing up here. This is an easier place to do it near the top of the picture where we're looking more directly at some larger shapes because this is hard to mix in with my really tiny shapes. It can, it can uh, since we only have these two values, we have the paper and the pencil. <laughs> you probably heard that loud motors hit by. We're, we're real close to the highway here. So, you know, this effect of making these shapes within the, within the cloud is good for these higher clouds. Notice that I stayed off of the edge. That's just a trick for creating a backlit effect on the clouds. I was sent a beautiful picture of clouds uh, just the other day. And it was a similar effect to this where, where the light was shining across, you know, but these were all in a shadow and, and it can create some really fantastic arrangements of color when you have the light shining across the sky, not, not quite setting yet, you know, just close to it. So I love, I love challenging myself to do colored versions of these things where we don't put the light and shadow exactly where you would first expect them to be. Just trying to change up the light scenario. So I'm just scribbling in a little bit more shadow here. We're gonna create some more puffs like this. Kind of go around this right here. Going over what I already made. So this is, this is why it's important at the beginning not to go too dark. So hopefully the drawing is, is dark enough now that, that it's easier to see, but it's easy for me to keep building dark. Uh, you know, in a painting, I tend to work from shadow to highlight because it's easier to think that way. The three-dimensional shapes, I build something out of the dark shadow as if I'm building something out of the nothingness. You know, I just, I just think that way. But with a pencil, it feels kind of reversed. And so we have to uh, think about where the shadows are and gradually make those darker because if you go, if you go too dark too fast, 
then it's hard to turn back. That's all. So now wherever I have these patches in between, look, I can, I can make these nice and dark and give the clouds more of a glow and really separate the clouds from the sky. Oh, yeah, I should mention that. Thank you for the reminder, Brian. I am very happy to celebrate. Okay, I'm going to flip cameras for a second. I just want you all to know that I am so thankful that we are up to 300,000 plus subscribers now. So thank you so much for us. I know that a lot of you watching now have been here for a long time. And uh, when, I, when I had small numbers of subscribers, man, it was so fun to just keep coming back and having a place where people were interested in, in letting me show off. You're all so gracious to just let me sit here and show off what I do and uh, let me exercise my, my passion of teaching and sharing the knowledge that I discover. So I want to say a big thank you for the 300,000 subscribers. If you have any ideas of a way to celebrate that, honestly, I'm just drawing a blank. I don't know how. I don't know how we could do that. Maybe just have a big pool party, except that we're not doing that now. That's not a thing anymore. <laughs> not anymore. If you think of some, um, let me know. I'm open to suggestions. Okay, so on my drawing here, I finally have a place to hang my 100,000 subscriber uh, award. You know, YouTube, they're real nice. They send, you a, they send you a plaque to hang on your wall for when you first reach 100,000 subscribers. Okay, now let's add a little bit of definition to this, this cloud in here so that you can actually see what I drew. Okay, so we've got shadow behind this, shadow here. And you can actually put a shadow on an entire layer. Once you get the details darkened in, I like doing this with pencil. Now this is after I flattened a spot on the pencil. So this is much easier now because my pencil has a flat spot. And so these lines are, are softer and wider and easier to blend with each other. But I can darken this entire layer just by scribbling over and it actually causes the shadows and the light spots to get darker so I don't lose my detail. So you can just go right over the top of everything. I had an amazing experience I gotta share with you guys. Okay, you're gonna be underwhelmed now that I set you up for amazing experience. Uh, I met a guy named Ken. Um, man, I wish I could remember. He's a, he's a very popular voice coach. He's up to a million plus subscribers now. He was here at Flagstaff. Ken, Ken, oh man, I gotta remember that name. I gotta remember that. If any of you know the guy I'm talking about, man, he's got long hair, looks like a rock and roll star. And he's a he's a vocal coach, he's here in Flagstaff. Man, I have to find it now, it's driving me crazy. Tamplin, Tamplin, Ken Tamplin. If you get a chance to look at that guy's videos, he, uh, he is, he shares my passion for sharing personal experience as opposed to the things that you're, you know, that you are supposed to know. And so what I, what I mean by that is that we, we have industries that have standards, right? And there's pressure, you know, like if I, if I was an art teacher in a public school system, there'd be pressure for me to teach certain things that I would probably do differently than if I'm here with freedom. That is not any criticism to anybody. It's just that it's different. And so there's a lot of freedom when you're, when you're just self-employed. And the only thing you use is the thing that you've had to discover in order to make things work. He's like that. I'm talking to Ken Tamplin. We're at this birthday party. And uh, I say, you know what? I need a voice coach. I've been trying to do these live streams for a, a couple months now, and my voice is completely failing. A lot of you remember that. My voice was dying, and I was really concerned. My brother and I, Ben, who edits my videos, he came and we shot a succession of how-to videos, and it was thrashed. I mean, we were doing everything we could find to try to rescue my voice just to get these videos made. I talked to him, and... He, you know, he pushes on my gut and he goes, oh, that's because you're just dunking all the area like this instead of instead of using your diaphragm. You got to talk from here, not from here. 
And I was like, man, this guy, you know, he was really getting up in my business. But, but then uh, I decided, you know what? He's got people following him for a reason, just like I do. I'm going to ask more questions instead of be on the defense. So I just started asking, well, what, what do you mean by that? Can you explain? And man, he went through the mechanics of how to hold, how to tense my vocal range, the EQ of the way your voice should sound if you're making a sound that can build vocal strength versus abuse your vocal cords. And he told me things that I just don't see. Else, Now, I don't research vocal, vocal coaches. But if you are in a position where you need to use your voice and not destroy it, man, that guy is awesome. So then I went on. This is the funny part of the story. Then I went on to ask him. I said, hey, hey, um, I, I had learned that he played guitar. I was like, you seem like you're, you're better than guitar at me. So let me ask you a question. I, I've had trouble. I like to play guitar. And, and so I said, I've had trouble with my picking. And, you know, it seems like I've just topped out on my speed, flat, flat picking, we call it. And he said, oh, well, well, I can answer that for you. He goes on to answer my hardest guitar picking question, way off subject. Anyway, I just got to brag on Ken Tamplin because he helped me in two ways that day. I have become so much better at both my guitar picking and I have saved my voice. This, this is life changing for me. So I guess you couldn't really have a better testimony, <laughs> testimonial for a guy. I just pitched this huge, but uh, you know, this testimony has to do with what you might discover if you let your guard down and try to listen before you react. Because, because I was I was a little bit put off and just thought, no, I don't really like the way he's invading my mental space right now. <laughs> I felt protected. I was like, no, I just I really need an answer to this. So you know, sometimes if you just let your guard down and ask, you find things. It was fun. Okay, let's finish up this cloud thing before I have to kill this, this live stream. I probably talked too long about that, but it was fun. I had to share that story. You find the answers you need in some of the most unexpected places. You know, that's that's been the story of my life anyway. So we're doing clouds in perspective. We stretch out the shapes here. We scrunch the shapes here. And we consider the overlap by creating these gradients like this. So if you're putting the, whether it's the light coming down or if it is the dark coming down, I might have dark clouds and put, put uh, you know, like this, where we have dark clouds and put the shadow going up so that you see light shining through the cloud. Or I might have light clouds and put the dark blue sky coming down, whichever you want to do for your scene. We squish the shapes together for the background. And the higher you make the contrast, the brighter the light becomes. So the darker, the darker the pencil becomes, the brighter the light appears to be. So then in here, we've got this big cloud. I was darkening and darkening this just so I could come in here and start putting some shadow in here like this. Let's put a Put a shadow in here, make this cloud darker, darker as we go down, like this. That's just to make my scene look a little more complete. And then we can do the same thing. Look, I'll put a, a lower part of the cloud, dark, get lighter as I go up. Make this gradient. Go up here to this higher puffy part. And then let's make some individual parts of this. You know, if we have some larger, larger sections of these puffs coming out, let's start dark and make a little bit of a shadow where it's really buried inside of the cloud between these areas so we can make some deep areas of this cloud in the same way. Here, let's make one here as well. Lighter as we go up like that. Okay, we got this kind of cloud in here, and then we'll put some, put some puffy clouds in here, put some puffy clouds in here. We'll put, put a little bit of shadow. Now I'll just use a simple method of using these little triangle shapes, doing pretty much the same thing I did here, but upside down. So everywhere I make a little valley like this, it's a little V shape and I get lighter as I go up. If I don't even think about the cloud that I'm making, then it's going to end up making lots of shapes. I can overlap these one on top of the other. See, they get in each other's space like this. And look at the little valleys they create. It just 
uh, immediately creates the look of clouds in front of clouds, with little valleys in between. Let's go like this. That is pretty exciting. 300,000 subscribers. I never saw myself as a YouTuber. That was the last thing on my mind when I set out to be a painter. I was just trying to think of a better way, a better way to pay my bills and said, maybe I can do art instead of just paint walls white, you know? Then along came YouTube in 2005. 2005. I think that's it. It hasn't been around that long. Man, the change was crazy fast. So now same thing, I'm gonna open up these shapes. Let's go like this. How many people do we got tuning in right now? I'd like to know, I'm curious. Let's look, let's look right here and see. Does it say that on your, Brian's got his phone. Between the two of us, maybe we can figure out. Hey, all right, 75 people, this is a very short notice. I just barely sent an email out. If you wanna get on the email list, you can do that through the website. Anytime you order some of my videos at muraljoe.com, it sends you there, but I think you can also just go there and click on the on the mail list link probably to the right side of that. And I'll I'll send out a notification anytime I fire up one of these one of these live streams. Okay, so here all I'm doing is making these shadows. Notice that all of them just get wider because the space gets skinnier between clouds as it goes deeper because they're these rounded shapes. Here I have them stretched out near the bottom, then I squished them close together here uh, closer to the horizon. And so then let's go in here and just make like a, let's make a split. This will be a fun effect. Let's make a split right between these. Where maybe some dark blue sky is is back there, let's go like this. Just a little line that makes the horizon. Like that. You know, there's so much information on a horizon. When when you paint a picture, it's easy to, it's easy to uh, make all of this area, the horizon, too big because we three-dimensionally interpret that in information and we see maybe hundreds of miles. And so, uh, I, I see this all the time, is scrambling what we know with the shapes that we see in order to make us know that. And so we see this tiny little strip, but because it's being three-dimensionally interpreted instead of two-dimensionally, you know, this from, from here to here, if you're copying a photograph, you can by mistake make this part of the picture so much bigger because you feel like it is more of the picture. It's, it's all of this, all of this massive amount of, of objects and space that goes back to that horizon. Okay, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to make this cloud rising up lighter, lighter, lighter as it goes, goes up there. And then I'm going to make this darker, darker, darker as it comes down. We're really going to put some shadow under this cloud. And then we'll put a gradient coming out this way, so I can make, I can make like a crevice or, or a valley, by making a gradient go both directions. So if I make this darker here, then make it get lighter as it comes out this way, and then also lighter as it goes up this way, then it causes that dark spot just to go back, and then I have this shape, on top of the other shapes, like this. Go here, this is our this is our little cloudscape. So this is a kind of a picture that I might draw for somebody if they said, uh, I want a cloud scene in my room, I want a cloud scene in my restaurant, something like that. I'd, I'd start with a sketch like this and then we would troubleshoot it from there. I'd say, okay, well, here's our starting point. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. And being able to very quickly draw it and render render uh, something that, that looks three dimensional, it's very helpful, very helpful thing to be able to do as someone trying to offer, you know, a, a professional service to, to clients. Okay, so we got our cloud there. Let's go here and put a, put a little, we need some kind of a creature in here now. You know, wouldn't it be fun if we had a, had like a little, 
Yeah, let's just put a put a little Pegasus in there. We're gonna put a a neck right here. And then we'll put a body in here like this, put a nice, nice chest on that. Now, horsey, then we'll put the body going back like this. Drawing is so much about thinking in the larger shapes that the smaller shapes are inside of, and then the even smaller shapes that are inside of those smaller shapes, and then the even smaller shapes that are inside of those shapes. So anytime I try to draw something from imagination, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think, okay, okay, my big shapes that I have to fit things inside of, what are those shapes first? Of course, we all know that this is far from possible, but it is fun to think about a big horse flying with tiny little wings, because that's all it takes in this world. <laughs> now let's make some feathers on these wings. I'll just put gradients going back and we'll leave them light. You know, here's a fun trick with pencil drawing is just how dark you make it after you have the stage set. You create the feel of more or less light in there. Let's go like this, make that, make that opposite wing, maybe come down like that. Let's put a leg in here like that. Like that, curling around. We'll put another leg coming down like this. Put another leg going this way. Another leg going this way. There we are. There's our little Pegasus flying. <laughs> Those stubby little legs look more like a, more like a you know, donkey corn, unicorn. Yeah. There we are. There's our cloudscape. Thank you for that question, how to do clouds in perspective. We wouldn't have had content for today's show. If we didn't do that. So how about we do this again next Monday? Let's do a live, uh, live stream then. Monday is a good day for me right now to do these. So I'll send out a newsletter. I'll let you know the time. Uh, maybe we'll shoot for the morning instead of, instead of here in the afternoon. This was just because of what I, what I had to accomplish today. And so let's go back and see if there's any final words. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Let me be silly and draw a, a Unisys flying in front of some clouds with pencil. <laughs> it's always fun to just sketch random ideas. And uh, so I hope you can make it back for the next one. We'll do this again weekly. This, this seems like it's working well, streaming from here. I, I was waiting for some bad technical difficulty to happen. And it didn't. Bridget Shelby says, wings are not that tiny. <laughs> yeah, I did a painting of, of one of these. And I really tried to make the wings as big as possible because it bothered me, the physics of it. I was like, make, make it have big wings, big dramatic wings. I have a painting where I really tried to do that. I'm going to have to pull that out one of these days. Great quick sketch. Thank you so much, Susan. And it's good to see you back again, Susan. I'm glad you're here. This was fun. Thank you, Leanne, and thank you also for being back here. It was fun uh, months ago, you know. I'm, I'm glad that a lot of you are, are willing to come back and give it another go with me. <clears throat> Sessions off the cuff. Oh, that's where all the fun is, you know. That's that's where honesty happens. <laughs> it's when you don't is when you don't pre-record. Yeah, we got to keep that. We got to keep that going. It's a fun thing to do. I feel like we're just hanging out too. You know, it's not about always having amazing results, just some good time together and sharing, sharing what we, what we find. Thank you very much, Oribu-san. I'm going to try to say some usernames here. It's not always easy. <laughs> Karen Marsh says, great to see you again. You too, Karen. Thank you very much. Good to have you here. Snowy Ontario. Is it snowy in Ontario? Oh, I guess it would be. That's way up north, isn't it? All right. Cool. Thanks, Dale. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> Maybe to celebrate, you could show us some of your favorite paintings you've done. 
hey, that's not a bad idea at all. I think I hung my favorite paintings behind me. They're, they usually are my more, more recent paintings, you know, because I don't love going to the paintings of the past, but I'll, I'll give it a little more thought. Maybe to celebrate, oh, that's, that's, that's what I just read. Missed you a month ago, we'll watch. My email's better. New Year's resolution, <laughs> all right, good. <laughs> Thank you, Bridget. Thank you very much. Well, guys, this was a lot of fun. This won't be the last by a long shot. We're going to make more of a show. I want to uh, let you know that we have been working hard on some new content. My brother is hard at work doing some editing to make some superior content. And we're going to be asking for your help in order to get that out and seen as much as possible as we're trying to make it the kind of material that we could use on a network, some something like Netflix or some big network eventually. We're shooting for the stars here. I don't know if I have what it takes to make it that far, but we are trying to make that kind of content and get the, the same kind of concept, the same Mural Joe show talking about what we see and how to use that information in our creative work. It's just that kind of a thing, just produced better. And we put we put money and trouble into it this time, hoping to see some return on it. So I'll be excited to announce that in just a short time. I'll keep you posted. Love the snow, sunset hill trees. Hey, all right. Thank you very much. Back here. This was a this was also something we did for a paint night. That that picture here, I'll scoot the laptop out of the way so Brian can get a little better shot of that. And so uh, these paintings, this similar to that other one that I took time with the cliffs and the bird and the sunset that's up on the other wall, I would, I would paint the picture, make the plan. And I'm thinking on these future live shows that will do something similar to that. I, I, these paintings were the more elaborate version where I was freely planning the picture and identifying the colors that were going to be used in order to walk people through the painting later. So I did all of the, I did all of the uh, color mixing on these in advance, you know, and well, I planned it with primaries and then, and then we identified the colors after that and turned it into a step-by-step. -step. So if we just do a real quick focus on this, let's, let's take the camera real quick and go like this, right there, touch that. It'll, it'll take a second and focus on there. And you can see a, a little bit better what we've got. Simplest painting ever, this one. This painting, this painting, you know, all of these we did with just, uh, we did them We did them with like three, five colors, maybe five colors. And so this one we had the bright snow color, we had our transit, it was light clouds, transition color, shadow color for, for the snow. And then on the trees, it was the same color I used to make the shadow, just undiluted with white. And so I had my dark shadow color, I had my, my light shadow color, and we just mixed a, a little bit of those together to get the variation in these trees. And then we had two colors for the sunset. We had a, you know, the, the yellow gold color and the red color that I pre-mixed, and then just used white as, as we did it. So white, red, yellow, and then we had the same bright color that we used for this, we also used for the snow. So then that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six colors is what we did that painting with. And I'm gonna keep following this method. I'm dragging myself closer and closer to my desk right here. We're gonna keep using the same method uh, to develop more of these pictures. So probably you'll see a lot of that on these live streams. I will be uh, live developing the picture and then we'll make that available. Perhaps uh, I'll make that for sale later, the plan step-by-step step in order to try to make some money for myself in the process. <laughs> and so we'll get the best of both worlds, hopefully, doing that. Okay, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, feel free to go check out my website as well, muraljoe.com. You can see videos that I have there for sale now. And um, I'm really excited about being back up, doing the live streams. I will see you next week. And we're going to end this stream. Thank you again.